Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're going to talk about Young's inequality for increasing functions, a theorem that has a beautiful geometric proof and a lot of different consequences. So I'm going to start by talking about Young's inequality in two variables. And it states that if you have two real numbers that are non-negative and two positive real numbers p and q with the property that 1 over p plus 1 over q is 1, then ab is less than or equal to a to the p over p plus a, b to the q over q. This inequality in a more general form comes up a lot in analysis courses if you're studying things like LP spaces. Um, but we'll just stick with this uh, elementary form formulation that we have right here. So an example of this is if we set P and Q to both be two, then we'll have a half plus a half is one. And this inequality will say AB is less than or equal to A to the two over two plus B to the two over two. Um, and this can be established actually using the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So you can think of this as a little bit of a generalization of the two variable arithmetic geometric mean inequality in a sense. Okay, it further says that equality here holds if and only if a to the p equals b to the q. All right, so what is this Young's inequality for increasing functions? And how does it relate to this Young's inequality um, in two variables? Okay, so let's draw a picture to get a sense of what this inequality is talking about. So I'll draw a picture of an increasing function here, maybe something like this, and call it y equals f of x. Uh, because this is increasing, it's actually invertible. Uh, and if you want to get a sense of the graph of the inverse, we could rotate our heads like this, and that's like a reflected version of the inverse function. More explicitly, if we have a point here, the point has coordinates x, f of x, right? And so we can think of this as a point whose y coordinate is y, and subsequently, its x coordinate is f inverse of y. So this is also the graph of y equals f inverse of x, but with the coordinates flipped. All right, so let's pick random points here. Um, on the x and y axis, I'll call this one A, and then maybe this one over here I'll call B. Okay, so AB, which is the product involved over here, is the product of A and B, which is the area of this rectangle right here. Now, at the same time, we can look at this compared to some integrals. First, we have this piece here in green, which is the integral from zero to a of f of x dx. Right? And then secondly, we have this red region here, which extends a little bit outside of the rectangle formed by a and b. And because this is the graph of y equals f inverse of x, looked at, looking at it this way, this red region has area integral from zero to b, f inverse of x dx. Okay, so what this is saying then is if we add up these two integrals by the way we've drawn them, that the integral from zero to a of f of x dx plus the integral from zero to b of f inverse dx is at least a times b. We could have had some, a situation where this point was over here. We would get the integral from 0 to b of the inverse, and the integral from 0 to a would be the piece that would have a little more, more excess, like the one from the integral from 0 to b had in this case. Okay, so we have this inequality by this picture, and moreover, we'll see from the picture that equality holds if this point right here coincides with this point right over here. Right? Or in other words, B is itself f of A. So with equality, if and only if B is f of A. 
All right, so this is actually Young's inequality for increasing functions, um, and it has this nice interpretation that can be seen through the geometry of the graph of the function y equals f of x. So let's see what consequences we can get from this. In fact, we'll see how we can recover Young's inequality um, in the two variable case from this. So what we'll do is consider a particular function f of x and apply it to this. So we'll consider f of x equal to x to the p minus one. If we do that, then the integral from zero, the integral from zero to a of f of x dx is one over p x to the p evaluated from zero to a. At zero, this is zero. So this is a to the p over p. Great. So that's this piece right here. Now we need to compute the integral of the inverse of this thing. The inverse of f of x is x to the one over p minus one. And so we're interested in the integral from zero to p of x to the one over p minus one dx. Okay, this is x to the one plus one over p minus one which I'll simplify as p over p minus one times one over that exponent evaluated from zero to b. And so this is one over the quantity p over p minus one times b to the p over p minus one. Cool. And so that is this quantity right here. So Young's inequality for increasing functions then tells us that AB is less than or equal to A to the P over P plus B to the P over P minus one over P over P minus one. Okay, so let's let this thing be Q. Let me notice that one over P plus one over Q is one over P plus P minus one over P, which is one. So these values P and Q are precisely values that satisfy our original Young's inequality. And so we recover Young's inequality from Young's inequality for, for increasing functions. So this is great. The typical proof of Young's inequality is quite algebraic. Um, but we get it for free from this geometric interpretation using general functions f of x. So I hope you liked today's video. Um, if you did like it, please click the like button below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.